Hi there, welcome to Switch Mania. I am Clarence and today, we'll talk about the best Nintendo Switch games on sale. We will be covering the UK, EU, US, Australia, and Canada eShop. But first and foremost, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you want to see more of this series, please leave a like, remember to subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell to receive future notifications. Likes and subscriptions help keep the channel alive. First on our list is Namco Museum Archives Volume 1. Despite the fact that I wish Namco had included more in this package, it has a lot to offer for a very reasonable price. There is a wide range of titles available, from the best of all time to those that are at least mildly interesting. Namco Museum Archives Volume 1 is a great way to spend your time if you enjoy classic games or are simply interested in them. Whatever your feelings are about split archives, how much you enjoy Namco Museum Archives Volume 1 will be determined by how much you enjoy the NES and how much you enjoy this mix. Half of these games have better arcade versions, and depending on your platform, you may already have access to them through older Namco Museum compilations. Splatterhouse and Dragon Spirit, on the other hand, are as good today as they were in the 1980s. Pac-Man Championship Edition, on the other hand, is so unique that it must be seen to be believed. For its sale price right now, retro fans will have a lot of fun with this game. Next is Stardew Valley. It's a truly magical experience. Games are usually entertaining but not all of them are as engrossing as this one. This is a game that should be played over a long period of time. The enjoyment comes not from the small things you do every day, but from the way your sense of pride, satisfaction, and safety grows over time. Fans of Harvest Moon and Animal Crossing will feel right at home here, and even if you aren't one of those people, this game will likely surprise you. The risk could not be more worthwhile at the current price. Stardew Valley, despite a few technical issues, is still a shining star drop in its genre. Fans of the series that inspired it can return to the valley to unwind, and new players can do the same. Next is Portal Companion Collection. Portal 2 is still one of the most creative, funny, and clever video games we've ever played, even after a decade. The Switch port does an excellent job of introducing this masterpiece to a new audience. It looks great and most of the time runs at 60 frames per second with very few sacrifices. Co-op still works perfectly, and the first game, which is still enjoyable, is included. Every Switch owner should get this. Portal Companion Collection contains two of the best games ever created and are still incredible in 2022. Next is one of my favorites, Celeste. I couldn't stop even though my hands hurt from holding the switch. When I finally made it to the other side of one of Celeste's many gauntlets, I felt both relieved and curious about what it would throw at me next. It's an enjoyable and rewarding game, and I'm pleased to have given it a perfect score. I felt like I was on the same journey as Madeline after playing Celeste, which is a sign of good writing and clever design. Her struggle is simple to comprehend, her low points are painful to witness, and her high points are thrilling to experience. Her story is told with care and beautifully illustrated. It goes well with the satisfying and empowering game of which it is a part. It's not bad for a game about mountain climbing. Next is Untitled Goose Game. Untitled Goose Game is more unique, creative, and charming than most games on the Nintendo Switch eShop. It also has a realistic world that is enjoyable to explore, investigate, and, of course, screw up. This is one of the best Switch games because it has great physics, controls, surprising AI, and a distinct look. The only drawback is that it is short, but this is a case of quality over quantity. People who participate in this goose game will have a great time, but they will annoy the poor characters who live in a peaceful Anglo-Saxon town. Next up, Dusk. It's a devilish pleasure to move through Dusk's hellish environments and labyrinthine levels while destroying its army of twisted enemies with its top-notch gunplay. This game is a wonderful homage to the games that inspired it, but it also feels right at home in the modern world due to how well it plays and how much emphasis it places on telling a simple but interesting story. So, if you miss old FPS games or simply enjoy FPS games in general, check out Dusk on the Switch. Dusk is a near-perfect first-person shooter, and this port is flawless. The fights are thrilling, and the story and details are all Always fascinating to look at. Next is Hyper Light Drifter Special Edition. It's an incredible game that looks and feels fantastic in every way. It looks great on the Switch's screen and can be a surprisingly immersive experience even in louder, more crowded environments. I loved every new place and activity I tried, and I took screenshots the entire time. It's difficult, but it's been well worth it every step of the way. Hyper Light Drifter Special Edition is a more comprehensive adventure that will captivate us not only because of its art, gameplay, and image-based story but also because it has a deeper, more real meaning that stems from projecting its creator's heart disease. Next is Chicory, a colorful tale. Chicory is a fantastic adventure game. It's on par with the best of them. There is a lot to see and do, 
and it will most likely take you 25 to 30 hours to see and do it all. The characters and their problems are interesting and likable, and it's all very sweet without being too sweet or talking down to the player. It's also a heartfelt little tearjerker that will definitely touch you if you're an artist and will probably touch you even if you're not, as long as you can feel basic empathy. Chicory is simple to learn and play, but it is also long and complicated, with perfect controls, performance, and graphics. If you put in a lot of time and effort into painting the world, you'll end up with a game that is uniquely yours and speaks directly to you. The game's mechanics, themes, and visuals will all blend seamlessly. Next up, Hollow Knight. The fragmented nature of Hollow Knight's story leads me to believe that I saved Hollow Nest in my ending, but an after credit screen reveals that I only got 73% of the way there after 27 hours of play. I may be finished, but I'm not even close. I still have a lot of upgrades to do, bosses to avoid, a real ending, and a mantis to defeat. And I can't wait to return. In fact, Hollow Knight will not leave you feeling empty. This incredible Metroidvania, which is likely the best of its kind in over 20 years, will give you a feeling that only a few games have been able to provide, the feeling of having played a masterpiece. Hollow Knight is a massive, beautiful, and terrifying Metroidvania game with a lot of details. This is one of the best Nintendo Switch adventures available. It has a strong combat system as well as cute art and sound. Next is One Piece, Pirate Warriors 4. One Piece, Pirate Warriors 4, outperforms its predecessors thanks to more playable characters and options, as well as exciting new features. As always, anyone can enjoy this game, but manga anime fans who enjoy the Musou genre will adore it. Fighting hordes of bad guys was never boring, and it was a great way to relieve stress. One Piece, Pirate Warriors 4 is a Switch game that everyone should own. Put on your favorite straw hat and head to the battlefield. You will not be disappointed. Believe me, One Piece, Pirate Warriors 4 is not only a great One Piece game, but it's also a great Musa game. Next up, Divinity, Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition. Divinity, Original Sin 2 is a work of art as well as an RPG fan's dream. This game transports us to a world where our decisions have a significant impact on secondary plots. It does, however, maintain a high level of storytelling, combat, and character customization. This is one of the greatest role-playing games ever created. The Definitive Edition demonstrates that even the most complex role-playing games can be successfully ported to gamepad-only consoles. It's one of the best games in recent years, and it's an instant classic in the pantheon of RPG greats. The fantasy world is well thought out and emotionally charged, and the tactical combat is superb. Next is Undertale. Undertale is a brilliant and well-crafted game that understands what it takes to make a good RPG work. Indeed, it understands what makes a good RPG work so well that it can defy expectations and deliver something that is almost a parody of the genre. We haven't played a game in a long time that has surprised us so frequently and in so many different ways. Undertale may not appear to be much but it has a lot more going for it than meets the eye. This is an easy recommendation, particularly for RPG fans, because the characters are well written, the battle system crosses genres, and the music is good. Please do yourself a favor and download this. Next is What Remains of Edith Finch. If you haven't yet played What Remains of Edith Finch, I highly recommend it. Its explorations of loss and tragedy made me cry several times, but it also has an uplifting and helpful emotional core. This experience doesn't change much because the port is finished and doesn't affect performance or graphics significantly. It should be played by anyone who is interested in video game stories, in my opinion. What remains of Edith Finch loses nothing when it moves to Switch, and its beautiful and sad story remains as powerful as ever. Next up, Axiom Verge. This is a fantastic port of a fantastic game, nothing more, nothing less. If you missed it on other platforms, we strongly believe you should get it here. This is the complete Axiom Verge experience, available in a format that allows you to play it on the go as well as at home. It comes down to how much you love it if you've already played it on other platforms. This is the same fantastic game you've already enjoyed, so the decision to purchase it again is entirely yours. Whatever your opinion is, Axiom Verge is a fantastic example of how to create a Metroidvania game, and we couldn't be happier with it. Next is Dicey Dungeons. I had high expectations for Dicey Dungeons, but it exceeded them all. It's extremely well thought out in terms of how the classes and equipment interact to create unique and creative situations in which you must use almost every playstyle and strategy to the fullest. It works well as a series of episodes because it makes the early parts more approachable while maintaining enough variety that even when the episodes slow down, there is still plenty to enjoy. Dicey Dungeons is a fantastic game that could almost be described as a roguelike for people who don't like roguelikes. You must, however, enjoy fighting by taking turns, as well as dice. Next is Rayman Legends Definitive Edition. Rayman Legends Definitive Edition is currently one of the best 2D platformers on the Switch. The level design and gameplay are excellent, 
and there are numerous ways to play. The graphics and music are stunning, and there is so much to unlock and do in the game that you will be occupied for dozens of hours. Unless you really like Legends, there isn't much here for people who have played this on other systems. However, if you haven't played Rayman on a modern console yet, there's no reason not to do so. Rayman Legends Definitive Edition expands on the original game while not attempting to reinvent it entirely. It doesn't need to because the piece is already entertaining, interesting, and varied. Because it can be played on the go, the Nintendo Switch makes it even more appealing. Next up, One Piece, Unlimited World Red, Deluxe Edition. This is not Unlimited World Red's first appearance. This version has been improved to work better on Switch. The animations are smoother and the assets are sharper and clearer. Everything runs at 60 frames per second, but the cutscenes haven't gotten as much attention as the rest of the game. Nonetheless, this version includes all DLC and the portability of the Switch, allowing you to take a console-level experience with you wherever you go. Again, as a One Piece fan, this game satisfied my desire to let loose with Nami, Luffy, Chopper, and everyone else in the way that the manga depicts them, as brutal, efficient, over-the-top, and simply beautiful to watch. Next is My Hero 1's Justice 2. My Hero 1's Justice 2 is a good, fun arena brawler that stands on its own. Just by itself, the game is a great way to experience the My Hero Academia franchise. The look is great, the number of playable characters has grown, and the small changes made by the developers really do make a difference, even if they are sometimes hard to spot. The idea for My Hero 1's Justice 2 is still simple straightforward, and fun. A good fighting game that is better than the first one in some ways, but could still be better. It has a lot of ways to play, content that can be unlocked, and an online mode that makes it easy to play again and again. Next is Pac-Man Championship Edition 2 Plus. Pac-Man Championship Edition 2 Plus is an update to the 2016 PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One game. The game modes and gameplay remain the same, but the Switch version includes a new two-player local co-op mode that adds some cool new mechanics and makes the game more enjoyable. It is also possible to play with just one Joy-Con. If you don't have any friends to play with, you can play against the computer, but it won't be the same. Pac-Man is still making people happy after more than 35 years. Pac-Man Championship Edition 2 Plus is still a good option for those looking to escape reality and immerse themselves in a fast and crazy experience. This is due to the game's simple structure and excellent rhythm. Next is Blue Fire. Blue Fire is a pleasant and enjoyable surprise, and it marks a successful debut for Roby Studios. Only the performance issues, the slightly sloppy combat, and the high level of difficulty are points of contention, and the latter is debatable. This world was created with love and skill, and it is easy to become lost in it. The more you practice and improve, the more you'll get out of it. It's difficult, but it doesn't rely on cheap tricks or gotchas to make it so. The graphics are interesting and, more importantly, simple to understand. Even if it doesn't have the most unique parts, this is a fantastic overall experience. It's all about the gameplay, and once you're moving through the infinite space of the void stages, everything else fades away. Next is Cyberhook. I can't express how much fun I had playing Cyberhook. It has short levels that allow it to be played at any time of day. The game runs flawlessly on the Nintendo Switch, making it a joy to play from start to finish. Its open, freeform level design makes it enjoyable to explore, and I feel so good when I complete a level but I sometimes replay it to find the best route and earn that 3-star rating. Cyberhook is an excellent choice if you want a game that is simple to learn has arcade-style replayability, and simply feels great to play on the Nintendo Switch. I'm not sure what else to say except that I'm hooked on this one. That's all guys. I hope this video was helpful in deciding which game to play, and thank you for checking out the list. Please remember to subscribe and we'll see you at the next one.